What is up, everybody? This is your guy, Cly, and welcome back to Budget Tubing. And today, I'm going to be talking about the high-definition action camera with included accessory kit from Five Below. And this is a video that I did not expect to make, because while I did see this pop up on Five Below's website a few months ago, I never actually expected this to hit their physical stores. But I think I know why there was such a long delay, and it's in this zone right here. On this packaging, it says that it is a 720p high-definition video camera. It is multifunctional, has a 90-degree wide-angle lens, and is IPX7 waterproof. And if we take a look at the version on the website, it says that it is also a 720p high-definition video camera. It has shock protection, it's a 90 degree wide angle camera, and it's IPX6 waterproof. And I'll talk more about those differences later on in the video. Instead, I want to mention one thing really quickly, and that's the price, because this is one of Five Below's $20 items. And that might be catching some of you off guard, because this is not Five Below's first action camera. And I'm not just talking about this little Magnavox model that was on their shelves for a little while. No, the one that I'm talking about is from Extreme Tech, and it is practically a carbon copy of this model. And yet, both the Magnavox camera I just showed you and the Extreme Tech model came in at $10. And this one's $20. But there is kind of a reason for that, especially when compared to the Extreme Tech camera. Because if we pull up this data sheet, you'll see that while the camera is indeed pretty much identical, the package only came with the camera and the battery. In this case, you receive the camera itself, a waterproof case, a tripod mount, a two-part helmet mount, a bike mount, an angle adapter, a tripod adapter, a hook and loop strap, a fixed strap, a 3.7 volt 200 milliamp hour battery, a micro USB cable, and the manual. So yeah, I definitely think this is at least somewhat more deserving of the $20 price tag. Even more so when you take into account that both of those other cameras were more than likely bought on a closeout because those both originally retail in the 20 or so dollar range. And you can still find the Extreme Tech action camera on some websites for about 15 to 20 dollars. Also, another big difference between this action camera and those other two is that the inventory wasn't bought at a closeout and then resold. Because as I've mentioned in multiple other videos, Digital Essentials is one of Five Below's own store brands. And if you look at the bottom of the box, you will see that it is distributed by 1616 Holdings, and that is Five Below's parent company. Now, there are probably a couple of issues you noticed when I rattled off the list of things included in this kit. And the first one is the fact that I didn't mention a micro SD card, because that is indeed the kind of memory that it uses. And, well, the fact of the matter is, it does not come with a micro SD card. But that's not that much of a deal due to the fact that it's pretty common for action cameras in this price range to not come with one. That being said, when you do go to buy a memory card for this, make sure it is no larger than 32 gigabytes. Because while it does mention this in the manual, this isn't one of those instances where the manual is going to say its maximum compatibility is 32 gigabytes just for safety's sake. No, they actually mean it. I have tested this with both a 64 gigabyte as well as a 128 gigabyte micro SD card, and it did not detect either one. Fortunately, it did get along with my 32 gigabyte, but that one's kind of in a device where I don't want to format it to use with this camera. Instead, I just went with a little 16 gigabyte, and that has done the job well. I mean, the file sizes for this thing are not huge with the kind of video we're dealing with here. More on that in a moment. The other weird thing about this camera is the fact that it comes with a 200 milliamp hour battery. And to be perfectly honest, I had no idea that these particular batteries came in this size. 
because as far as I can tell, this is the exact same form factor battery that you're going to be finding with many other of these budget-friendly action cameras. And the ones included in those kits are 900 milliamp hours. Fortunately, it is possible to buy more batteries that are compatible with this due to the fact that, like I said, it uses the same generic form factor seen in these low-cost action cameras. Now, with all of that being said, according to the box, this 200 milliamp hour battery is going to get you around 50 minutes of recording and a two to three hour charging time. And you know what? They're not lying. I have tested this camera at all of the different video settings and it averaged between about 54 minutes to an hour and nine minutes depending on what you had it set on which is honestly not half bad especially when you take into account that the battery that i have in my main recording camera is also rated at about 60 minutes of recording now let's take a closer look at this camera over here on the front you have the power and mode button on the top, you have the OK and shutter button. On the side, you have a couple of navigation buttons. Right here, I don't know if you can see it, there's a little grill, and this is where your microphone is. On the bottom, you have another grill right here, which is where your speaker is. And finally, you have the little battery door, which is a bit hard to open when you first get this out of the package, but eventually it does loosen up. Fortunately, not loose enough to just randomly fall off. Also on the back, we have the two inch view screen. If I go ahead and hold down the front button for a couple of seconds, the camera will turn on and it defaults to video mode. And here is where you're probably gonna notice something interesting. And that is the fact that it claims to be set to 1080p even though the packaging only called this a 720p camera. And if I hold down the shutter button for a couple of seconds, we'll go into the menu, and it does say 1080p, and it gives you the option to switch to 720p 30 frames per second, or VGA 30 frames per second, also known as 480p. And here is where things kind of get interesting, because while it does list 1080p, in all of my testing, the 1080p videos are just 720p videos. Not even upscaled, not even renamed. According to VLC, my 1080p videos are playing back at 720p. That being said, even the 720p setting is a lie. But fortunately, the packaging isn't trying to deceive you there. Because, as you can see, it does say video format is real 480p, but interpolated, aka upscaled, up to 720p. So, I'll cut them a little slack for not calling this a 1080p camera on the box, but you shouldn't expect amazing video quality out of this, even if it is outputting a 720p file. Next on the menu, you have the ability to enable or disable a timestamp, Personally, I prefer having that off, but it could be useful when you use the motion detect mode, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a second. You also have the ability to set the camera so that it can automatically turn off a recording in a one minute, three minute, or five minute period, or if you have it set to off, the camera just keeps rolling until you hit your shutter button again. That's where I usually keep it. You also have the ability to enable or disable the microphone. And to be perfectly honest, I think you should have it disabled because if you don't, every one of your recordings is going to have a sound like this. And that's not ideal. If you want to get around that issue, you're going to need to use an external microphone. Unfortunately, this camera doesn't have an input for one, so you'd probably want the external microphone hooked up to something like your cell phone or whatnot. And I know you're probably thinking, if you've already got your cell phone on you, why do you need this little camera? I'll talk more about that in a moment. Instead, let me distract you with this test footage. It's nothing special, I just took this out to my local park to see how it behaved in sunlight. 
here is the 720p slash 1080p video, and here is the VGA, aka 480p video. Also, here's a quick shot of one of the keyboards that I'm going to be reviewing in the not too distant future. And I kind of got very surprised by the fact that the LEDs on the keyboard aren't strobing in this shot. Because if you've watched one of my keyboard reviews, you'll know that the LEDs on these things do not get along with digital cameras. In fact, here's that same keyboard on the camera that I usually use to shoot the LED demos for those videos. I hate to say it, but this little camera did a pretty dang decent job for that, despite the fact that the focus was fuzzy and the resolution wasn't great. As for why the focus was fuzzy, that's because this camera uses a fixed focus lens, which is actually what you want for an action camera. You do not want autofocus, because that just means every time you move, it's going to try to lock onto something else. And when it's constantly trying to get into focus, that means it just won't be in focus. It's better to have a fixed focal point at a couple of meters away from the lens. Now, back to that motion detection setting. What this is going to do is when you have it selected, let's go ahead and turn it on and exit the menu by hitting the front button. Anytime the camera detects motion, it's going to, there we go, kick on the recording and go for about 10 to 11 seconds. Give it a moment and it'll turn off right about now. There we go. And it's going to not record anything else until it detects motion again. So if I do that, it'll start recording again. But if you manually stop the recording by hitting the shutter button, it's going to take you out of motion detection mode. So you're going to want to keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and turn this off for a second. There we go. But with that in mind, this would actually make for a nice little security camera. If it wasn't for that pesky 50 minutes battery life. Fortunately, if I go back here and just take the battery cover back off, use this handy little strap to pull the battery, and then bring in a, an external battery pack, plug that into the camera like so. So, there we go, doing it through the viewfinder, never easy. The camera will turn on and work just fine despite not having a battery installed. And that's a good thing. You do not want to leave this plugged in for multiple days at a time with the battery installed. Otherwise, you're going to build up a memory in the battery. At least I think you will. I honestly do not know how good this battery would be in such a situation due to how cheap it is. So just to be safe, you're going to want to pull the battery in situations like this. And you'll want to pull the battery and use external power for another feature that I'll be showing you shortly. All right, back to the camera. And I'm just using my power bank as a black surface for this part so that I can do this and switch over to digital camera mode and you can still make out some of the things on the screen. Now, as you can see, this is supposedly in 12 megapixel mode. And if I go to the menu, like so, I'm able to change it from 12 megapixel to eight, five, three, two, and 1.3 megapixel. About that. Let's go ahead and start things off by showing you this lovely 12 megapixel photo that I shot. Isn't it lovely? That's because, as previously mentioned, this camera uses a sensor that is natively 480p. It is not 720p. It is not 1080p. It is 480p. And who knows, maybe I'm giving it too much credit and it's actually just 240p. Either way, best case scenario, this is a 0.3 megapixel sensor. And they don't even give you an option to select that. And it is fixed focus, so you're not really going to be getting any decent photos. The next mode on this camera is the audio recorder mode. And I did test this out. And here's what it sounds like. Here's what I sound like on the Action Camera's dedicated audio recorder mode. 
I'm about a foot or so away from the microphone, and that's about where you're going to be when making quick audio notes. All in all, it's not the worst. Not amazing, but not the worst. At least the squeal from the video mode is gone, and as such you can capture voice notes without the, too much of a worry. Also over here on the audio recorder mode are a few additional settings, which affect pretty much everything else on this camera. It's kind of weird. First off, you have the ability to format your memory card. I did that before recording, so no need to bother with that right now. You also have the ability to select the language on the device. The auto off mode, which I can't remember if that's for the voice recorder mode only or if that affects when the camera turns itself off altogether when you're not recording. If that's the case, you're definitely going to want to have the auto off mode set to off when using this in motion detection mode or another mode I'm about to show you. Next up, you have the ability to do a full system reset, as well as change the light frequency on the camera between 50 hertz and 60 hertz, which is kind of useful if you detect flickering LEDs like I showed you earlier. It defaults to 50 hertz, and that's where I'm going to leave it right now. Here you have the ability to set the date, which, as you probably noticed in all of the timestamps earlier, I have not done because... Well, I just did a factory reset on this thing before starting to record this video. Over here on USB, that's where things are going to get interesting because by default, it's just a disk drive. It allows you to access the files on your SD card. But if I bring that up, we can enter webcam mode, which I'll demonstrate shortly. This is the other mode I mentioned where you're going to want to pull your battery, though. Below that, you have the ability to view the software version of the camera, as well as to change how long until the screensaver starts, which I believe is just when the screen goes black without the camera actually turning off. The last mode on the camera is just the ability to view back all of the files you captured, which, if I wanted to, I could just watch my fingertips really quick as they shoot past the camera during motion detection mode. That's Totally what we want to see right now, right? And you can scroll through the additional files like so. Here's just a brief demo of the action camera in webcam mode. And as you can see, according to OBS, the default resolution is 720p. And that really is the only selectable resolution in this software. Of course, if you are using this action camera as a face cam, you're not going to be having it take up the majority of your screen when you're recording at 1080p, which is what I'm doing here. Instead, you're going to have it scaled down into the corner like this. And I'm not going to lie. The video quality is pretty passable at that size, and it does a great job adjusting to different light changes, as you can see as I go between my lit recording table and the board game shelf in the distance. As for the accessories that come with this camera, I'm not going to dig into every single one of them, because that would push this video well beyond its already bloated length. So instead, I'm just going to talk about the most important one, and that is the so-called waterproof case. And I say so-called because, as I mentioned all the way at the start of this video, depending on the version of this packaging, Five Below is claiming that this is an IPX6 or an IPX7 rated case. And the big difference between those two ratings has to do with how it's affected by water. Now, with just IPX6, it is going to be absolutely dustproof, and by extension, so is IPX7. However, IPX6 is only rated to handle high pressure and heavy water sprays. So things like a heavy downpour or maybe the occasional water hose or squirt gun. Whereas IPX7 is actually rated for submersion in water down to one meter for up to 30 minutes. Of course, I don't have a one meter deep water source, so I haven't really tested that. The other important parts of this case have to do with how you're actually going to get your camera out, because if you're anything like me, you're going to struggle with it for a minute when you first get this, because the manual does not do a good idea telling you how to open this thing. What you're going to do is see this latch right here. You just need to push it forward and then pull up on this side of the clamp. When 
I first did this, I was actually prying on this side, and as you can probably guess, I got nowhere fast. The last important feature for this waterproof case has to do with the fact that it's compatible with pretty much every other action camera mount on the market, and if I'm not mistaken, that also includes those for GoPro. All you need to do is unscrew this bolt right here, pull it out, and you're ready to attach your next accessory. And it would definitely be a good idea not to misplace this particular bolt because the other ones in this kit and probably a few others are not really going to be long enough to get around the outside of this case. Also, if you're thinking of picking this up at Five Below, be sure to take a look at pretty much every other mounting device they have, even if they just say it's for smartphones, because they do have at least one tripod and this nice hands-free neck mount that just so happens to use the same style of mounting hardware. And as such, it is compatible with the accessories in this kit. And there you have the high definition action camera with included accessory kit from Five Below. And to be perfectly honest, I don't hate it. It's about on par with similarly priced kits that you're gonna find online. And at the end of the day, it's not bad, especially if you can find this in your local store. And I wouldn't be surprised if you can because all of the five belows in my area now have these, even though some are very notorious for being late to the party when it comes to getting new products. Now, as for whether or not this camera would be a good grab for you or someone you know, that's gonna come down to the particular use case. I do not suggest using this camera to launch a YouTube channel. For that, you would probably be better served buying a low-cost Android device. You can usually find prepaid or used devices in the $20 to $30 range, and that's going to get you a much better camera than this one. However, those devices are also kind of bulky and delicate when compared to this, so it does have its use mostly as a supplemental camera. Now, if you're getting into a hobby that's going to put a camera at risk, like I just said, the Android device will probably be a bit too fragile for that, or heck, might even be too heavy for that if you're doing something like flying a drone or model rocketry. Also, if you do happen to have a much more expensive action camera, but you wanna do a stunt that you don't know if the camera would survive, here's your little $20 tester, and if this survives, then you can put your multi-hundred dollar camera on the line. Or there are cases like myself where I wanna get some really interesting shots, but I'm not gonna be using an action camera enough to justify a high dollar purchase. And then there are the people who need a $20 webcam that has a decent enough resolution to get their live stream going. So there are definitely use cases for a camera like this and the $20 price tag is justified when it comes to all of the accessories that are included. Now, I think I might have rambled on quite a bit longer than anticipated when making this video, so I'm just gonna go ahead and say, until next time, this is your guy, Cly, signing off.